In this short video, we're going to look at double integrals over more general regions and how to evaluate them. So we defined our definite integral, or double definite integral, over a rectangular region. But it's pretty easy to extend it to an integral over a general region. All we do is we take our general bounded region and enclose it in a rectangle R. And then we define a new function based on our original lowercase f of x comma y. We define uppercase f of x comma y to simply be piecewise defined. If x comma y is in the domain, it's exactly the same as lowercase f. And outside that domain d, it's going to be 0. And so then uh, we know how to calculate, or we know the definition of the double integral of f over our rectangular region. But since it's 0 outside that domain, that's going to be exactly our double integral over the domain d of our original function, lowercase f. Now, for a general region, it can be quite challenging to find a, the, or evaluate a double integral. Uh, you would probably have to resort to using numerical techniques. But for certain types of regions, it's going to allow us to do, perform an, an evaluation using the techniques that we already know and obtain an exact answer. So we're going to have two types of regions. Type 1 regions are regions where the upper and lower bounds of the domain D are curves, which can be expressed as functions of x. And then the right and the left will just be numbers. So for example, here is a type 1 region. It is bounded on the left and the right by just numbers and above and below by curves. Now, these two curves do not intersect, but they could intersect at one endpoint, or they could intersect at both endpoints, both at the right and the left. How do we evaluate this? Well, we'll use this formula. And in this formula, notice that the outer integral always has constants, and that's always true throughout all of the work that we're going to do with both double integrals and when we start triple integrals, the outer integral has to have constant bounds. The inner integral, the bounds are the equations or formulas for the upper and lower curves. So they're going to be y bounds, y equals some function. Now the variables used in that equation are going to be x values, right? But uh, they are equations for y equals the lower curve and y equals the upper curve. Now, since the uh, outer integral are the constants, the x values, and that means dx has to be the outer integral and dy has to be the inner integral. Now, type 2 regions are where we have a left curve and a right curve, which are functions of y. And it's the y bounds which are constant. So, for example, this would be a type 2 region. The red curve is our right curve. The blue curve is the left curve. And the bounds on y are just constants c and d. And just like with type 1 regions, the two curves, they may not intersect, or they may intersect at one of the endpoints or at both of the endpoints. We have a similar formula for evaluating this. So again, the 
outer integral are have constant bounds, so that means those are the bounds on y, so our outer integral must be a dy integral. The inner integral is dx, and its bounds are the function formulas, which will actually be, uh, I should have put y there, so let's go ahead and make a quick, quick correction. And this should be h2 of y and h1 of y. So those formulas will be in terms of y. And make the correction once again. So for type 2 domains, we have the opposite order of integration, with integrating with respect to x first, then with respect to y. So let's do an example here. We're going to have a region D in the first quadrant enclosed by the two curves, y equals x and y equals x cubed. So the fact that they give us the formulas in terms of y equals something it's going to be a hint that we're going to have an upper curve and a lower curve. Let's start by sketching the region. And we need to be able to figure out what our domain of integration looks like and what the bounds are, which is the upper curve, which is the lower curve. Or maybe we want to think of it in terms of a left curve and a right curve. And then what are the numerical bounds on the other variable? So for y here, we can see that uh, we have y equals x is the upper curve, y equals x cubed is the lower curve. And so that's the bounds on y. The bounds on x then would be the smallest x value in this domain or region D. And the largest x value is 1. So we've got a type 1 region. So we're going to set it up where the outer integral is dx, the inner integral is dy. And what are the bounds on the inner integral? Upper curve is y equals x, so we just write x. The lower curve is y equals x cubed, so we just write x cubed. The bounds for the outer integral go from 0 to 1. That's the smallest x value, the largest x value in that region. So now we proceed as before, find the partial antiderivative with respect to y. So that'll be x times y plus y squared. Now I'm going to evaluate that from x cubed to x. That means I'll first, wherever I see a y, I'll replace it with an x in this formula. Then I'll subtract off the evaluation where y has been replaced by x cubed. First replace x. x times x gives me x squared. x squared is x squared. Now subtract off. x cubed times x is x to the fourth. x cubed squared is x to the sixth. So I can collect some like terms there and then just take the antiderivative and evaluate that as I did in calculus one. Now, uh, in our second uh, example, we're told that we have constants for the y bounds, but formulas here for the x bounds. So really, we have a left curve and a right curve. Our left curve is x equals y minus 1. And our right curve is x equals 1. And so, and that's the y values go from 1 to 2. So we're looking at this triangular region here. And since we have a left curve and a right curve, then this is a type 2 region. 
and we'll evaluate it using this formula. So the outer integral is going to be dy with constant bounds 1 and 2. The inner integral is going to be uh, with respect to x, and our formulas for the right curve, so we always do right on the top and left on the bottom. The big thing goes on the top, small things on the bottom. As we x goes to the right, it gets bigger. So that's why x equals 1 is on the top. x equals y minus 1 is on the bottom. So let's go ahead and uh, take the partial antiderivative with respect to x. So that's x squared plus xy. And I'm going to evaluate that. Well, I put the x equals to emphasize that I'm substituting. I could have just put y minus 1 on the bottom and 1 at the top. But I'm going to replace my x value with 1 and then subtract off the evaluation when I replace x with y minus 1. So I'll get 1 plus y, then subtract off quantity y minus 1 squared plus y times quantity y minus 1. So I need to do some algebra there. I'm going to go ahead and expand by removing the parentheses. I'll collect all the like terms. And then if I've done that correctly, I just need to evaluate this single variable definite integral, take the antiderivative, perform the evaluation. And my final answer is 4 thirds. Our third example, we're going to find a volume, so a volume under a surface, uh, x squared plus y squared plus 1, in the planes x equals 0, y equals 0, z equals 0, and x plus y equals 2. So the way it's written, we don't have a y equals formula or an x equals formula. We have x plus y equals 2. So we get to choose here. Uh, most people are going to be comfortable. Let's draw this out first. Our top surface is going to be uh, the paraboloid, and the bottom surface is just the xy plane. So it looks something like that. And then I've also drawn in there the curve x plus y equals 2, and that's bounded by x equals 0, y equals 0, so it's that triangular region. And so I'm going to solve x plus y equals 2 for y. So I'm going to look at this as a type 1 region, where I have an upper curve, y equals 2 minus x, and a lower curve, y equals 0. Note that we could have looked at this as a type 2 region as well, uh, but most people are more comfortable with type 1 regions. And so let's set this up using our formula. So the bounds on x go from 0 to 2, and I can see that from actually either graph, and the bounds on y go from 0 to 2 minus x. So I'll find the partial antiderivative with respect to y. Let's evaluate that from 0 to 2 minus x. I'm going to break that into two integrals. Uh, one, I can easily expand. I really don't want to expand 2 minus x cubed if I can avoid it. So what I'll do with the second integral is I'll go ahead and make a, a u substitution. I'll let u equal 2 minus x. du is minus 2x, minus dx, I'm sorry. And then I'll go ahead and uh, convert the bounds. When x equals 0, u will equal 2. When x equals 2, then uh, u will equal 0. So in terms of u, I'm going to have integral from 2 to 0, 1 third u cubed plus u du. So let me go ahead and find the antiderivative for each one. 
and then perform the evaluation. So since I've got all my bounds in terms of u, I don't need to change back to x in the second integral. And if I collect all these terms correctly and do the arithmetic, my final answer should be 14 over 3. So in our last example, we're going to try to again sketch a solid. So the volume is represented by this double integral. Now I can see that um, I'm going to have an integrand of uh, z equals 1 minus x. And my region of integration is going to be, well, this is a dy integral on the inside. That tells me those are my y bounds. So y is bounded above by 1 minus x squared. That's a parabola. And bounded below by the uh, y equals 0, which is the x-axis. And then the outer integral tells me that my x boundaries are from 0 to 1. So I'm going to try to draw a plane, 1 minus x. So here I have my, my x, y, and z axes. And so I know that I'm going, my plane is going to intersect z uh, when z equals 1. And then if x and y are 0, then uh, x is going to be 1. So we have this green rectangle or parallelogram representing the uh, plane z equals 1 minus x. Now our domain is the parabola, but I'm only going to draw half the parabola, the y equals 1 minus x squared, because I'm only interested in the portion where x goes from 0 to 1. So we can see a pretty good outline of what this shape is going to look like. Um, as this curve intersects this, if I project this curve up as it goes up and intersects the plane, it's going to have a curve something like this. And so you can see that the solid is going to be this wedge-shaped solid. Uh, with this parabolic curve along one side. The back part is a square, and I have a triangle here in the xz plane, and then this portion of the parabola in the xy plane. And if that's not clear, I went ahead and used some technology to sketch it as well.